<laughs> so good afternoon everyone. Welcome to our latest Facebook Live. I'm Zoe Clark, I'm Self-Management self Programme Officer at NAS and I'm delighted to be joined by Martin Lau today from Arthritis Action. Hi Martin, how are you? Hi Zoe, how are you? How's everyone? <laughs> I'll keep an eye on the comments as they come in. Yeah, yeah, given that it's lovely and sunny outside, not so warm though. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, here in Norfolk, um, I would go for a walk, but it is quite bitterly cold with the wind as well. I think I'm going to um, get my bike out for a little ride a bit later. Oh, that's a good plan. Braver than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. But then again, but then again, the so, gyms are now reopened, so, you know, <laughs> I might just go in and grab a workout. Yeah. Oh, nice. I bet you've been missing that. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So um, hi to everyone who's joining us live. Um, today is a session in all about managing your weight when you live with inflammatory arthritis such as axial spa or AS. Um, so Martin is from Arthritis Action and they're a national charity for people living with all types of arthritis. I have put a link to their website in the video description. So do take a look at the website because they have loads of information and loads of really helpful resources and links to further reading as well. Um, so obviously today weight management is a really extensive topic, but Martin has got some really good tips and some really good starting points for anyone who's looking to start managing their weight um, and they're not sure where to begin. So um, as, I've, as always, please do pop any questions in the comments and we'll go through them all in the Q&A session at the end as well. And the video will stay on the page afterwards, so if you can't join the whole thing, then please do pop back later to catch up. And we'll pop uh, the video on our webpage, My AS, My Life, as well. So, thank you everyone for joining. Um, and I'll hand over to you, Martin, to tell us a little bit about yourself to get started. Oh, well, hi everyone. You know, thank you for having me, Zoe. And I'm absolutely honored to be on your Facebook Live this afternoon. Uh, so, a little bit uh, about myself. Um, I have worked as a dietitian in an acute hospital for five years before joining arthritis action in 2011. At the charity, I run the dietetic service as well as assisting our director of development and membership to roll out new services to our members and to the general public. One of my babies, <laughs> well, my, you know, the things that I've been working on, well, or, or, well, now it has been created, um, is the online self-management resource. It is a platform designed to give people living with arthritis to learn and to offer handy tips on how to manage their arthritis on their own. Now, I also work quite closely with my exercise lead to explore how we can get people with arthritis to be more active. Through the lockdown, we have run online exercise classes what makes them a little bit different to other online classes is that I tailored the movement and exercises to individual. Now, you know, in case you raises a question as to why does a dietitian advising about exercise prescription, isn't that above his remit? <laughs> well, I'm also a strength and conditioning coach. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, um, the online classes are a great opportunity for members in different parts of the UK to meet virtually unprecedented time. That's wonderful. Thanks so much. And yeah, you definitely have many strings to your bows. I think it's really helpful that you have you know, the, the training in sort of the physical fitness side and also diet as well. Um, and particularly for this topic, that's really relevant, but you know, it helps so many aspects of arthritis management. And um, yeah, I want to say a jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I've been really enjoying your um, your exercises that you've been putting on social media with David as well. There's some really good exercises. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I'd encourage people to go and have a look at those and and follow just to get some simple exercises and stretches you can fit into your day as well. Brilliant. So um, I'll say hello to Pam, who's joined us, and Chantel from Arthritis Action has joined as well. Say hi. Thank you for joining. Um, and for everyone who's watching, please pop your questions in the comments box and we'll make sure that we come through and uh, answer all of them at the end. Um, so to begin with, um, 
certainly here at NAS we get asked about weight management quite a lot for people with um, axial spar and, and AS. Um, and I know you've looked into the effect of, um, of body weight and arthritis for all different types of arthritis. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, yes definitely, Zoe. You know, I think first of all, um, you know, we need to look at a publication by Versus Arthritis in 2019. It has been found that more than 70% of people with musculoskeletal conditions, that's including those with inflammatory arthritis, are carrying more body weight than they should. Now, clinically, healthcare professionals define overweight and obesity by body mass index or BMI. You know, no doubt that a lot of our listeners here um, you know, have heard about this. And BMI is calculated by using body weight in kilograms divided by the square of height in meters. A value about 25 is classified as overweight and a BMI of 30 or more represents obesity. Now, there are all those different numbers here. And if I can put this in context, so if a gentleman is six foot tall or 1.83 meters and weighs about 14 stone or 90 kilos in new money, he is classified as overweight as his BMI uh, scores at uh, uh, 27. But if he weighs 18 stone or, or 114 kilograms, then his BMI would be 34.6, which put him into the obese category. Now, BMI does have some shortcomings. And if you have the facility to do so, measuring your body fat percentage can also be extremely helpful. Now, the healthy range depends on your age, but as a rough guide um, for women is 21 to 36 percent and for men, 12 to 25 percent. That's really helpful. Um, and do you have any sort of information specifically for people with axial spar and AS? Ah, yes, I have. Now, <laughs> if we look at the prevalence of overweight and obesity within the population of axial spar, we can draw the data from the European map of axial arthritis. This study sampled um, over 2,800 patients in 13 different countries. It has been found that over 52% of patients are overweight and obese. Excess body weight steer patients to a less desirable clinical outcome. Not only the excess weight create mechanical burden to the joints, the extra fat cells in the body tend to induce a chronic inflammation within the body. But more importantly, being overweight and obese will make your biologics less effective. That's really interesting. And um, yeah, I, had, I hadn't heard of that before where it actually makes the, the medications less effective. So it's not just the, the strain on the joints. That's uh, yeah, really important for people on those medications. Um, so for anyone who's watching who would like to make some changes, do you have any advice um, on how they can do that? Do you have all day? <laughs> 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 I guess that, um, you know, where we need to, to, um, you know, um, to start the um, weight loss journey Really, the evidence is pointing out that um, we've got to, you know, set a goal. And I think it's really important, you know, um, to follow your personalized, smart approach. Now, as we all know, the SMART goals, SMART is actually an acronym. Um, it stands for specific, measurable, achievable, or attainable, realistic, and time-based. Now, once the goals have been set, you will then need to select the tool now, at present, there's a diet war going on out there. It's a bit of a minefield. It's, you know, low fat, low carbs, keto, intermittent fasting. But I think in the end of the day, all of this regime results in creating a calorie deficit. No matter which tool that you have decided to use, stick with it. And also, you know, use a regime that fits into your lifestyle. Now, anyway, um, you know, don't expect that the weight loss is linear and smooth. It is actually extremely bumpy. And, and for someone who is on this journey, it can be highly frustrating, and uh, which I absolutely understand. Now, my advice really is to be persistent and have a mean to track your, you, your progress. Speaking about tracking progress, I would recommend using a food diary or for those who are tech savvy, 
apps. By tracking your progress, you will then know whether you are on the right track or not, and you will then be able to troubleshoot if needed. Plenty of my patients were surprised that a few cheeky snacks have creeped into the daily intake, which it, it did hamper their progress. And I guess that you could start off by reducing food portion uh, by using a smaller plate. But if you don't have a small plate, take a standard size plate, separate it into four quarters. Fill the first two quarters with plenty of colored, brightly colored vegetables, either rainbow. And for the remaining two, one section is, um, is for carbohydrates, such as your potato, pasta, rice, or couscous. And the other is for protein, meats or, uh, or beans. Combination meals, um, such as uh, spaghetti bolognese, could, could fill up half of the plate. And I think instantly, you will see that the portion size is getting a little bit smaller. And when it comes to snack, puddings and the sugary drinks and, uh, and the foods, um, you know, my recommendation is to reduce, but no need to completely cut out because it will tend to have a knock-on effect on that. And I guess that these are the low-hanging fruits and ultimately enjoy your food, but not too much. That's some really helpful advice. And it's kind of some really achievable changes that people can make that you can yeah. sort of gradually build into your life so they are much more sort of achievable long-term as well. Um, and I know we certainly, before we went live, we were chatting about our sort of favorite things to be snacking on that we're trying to <laughs> cut down on <laughs> the biscuits and the, and the magnums. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I think that's right, one of my biggest downfall. <laughs> Um, and so that, that's been a really great introduction to the topic and some really great tips for people already. Um, if anybody has any questions after the session or uh, any more sort of specific personal questions, can they get in contact with you? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Um, and I think, um, you know, I guess that what we also needed to um, you know, quickly chat about is the other end of the weight management spectrum, which is um, you know ability to help people to gain weight as well. Is it all, is it all right if I can uh, quickly mention something about that? Absolutely, please do. We had um, Sophie ask this question before the, the session. Uh, the easiest way um, is to increase the portion size of your meals, I mean, which is you know, the opposite uh, of um, what we were trying to um, achieve in, in terms of uh, weight loss, but also increasing the number of meals consumed in a day can be a good way to bump up the daily calories as well. Now, other tricks such as smoothies made with full fat yogurt, um, adding more oils, such as olive oil or rapeseed oil to cook or to use a, a salad dressing, adding skim milk powder to soups, uh, milk puddings, uh, uh, mashed potatoes, custard, or even uh, using some of the high calorie milkshakes such as Complan or Meritin. Uh, I, I, I do believe that the bottom line is to tailor to the, uh, to the individual. That's excellent, thank you. And um, for Sophie watching, I definitely encourage, um, if she needs a bit more specific advice, please do get in contact. I've popped your contact details in the video description as well. Um, so hopefully people will get in contact if they need to. Wonderful. So um, we've now got time for a, a Q&A. Um, I think that will have thrown up quite a few questions already. Um, so I've seen them trickling in and we've got my colleague Sally in the in the comments section helping as well. Um, so Pam joined us and she said that she used to jog to control her weight, but it's now too painful for her. So she said she's very interested to hear some other ideas. Um, I imagine it's a little bit out of the remit of this um, this live, but do you have any advice in terms yeah. of non weight bearing exercise that may be helpful for Pam as well? Um, yeah, there are plenty that um, Pam can use. Uh, uh, certainly, looking at um, you know a, a seated sort of um, exercise, you know, quite useful. Um, but then again, you know, it's quite difficult uh, in terms of so like you know, so like you're know, chatting about the exercise without actually seeing the person uh, so I guess that um, you know um, you give me a call and then uh, we can sort of like look that's wonderful thank you um, and we have a, a question uh, or a comment from Sarah so Sarah says since her diagnosis um, she's the biggest she's ever been she's five foot one and over 13 stone 
she eats a balanced diet and she's not gaining weight, but she's not losing it either. She struggles with exercise. Do you have any further advice for that? Or I suppose, Sarah, can maybe start with the, the changes and the advice you've already suggested? Yes, um, sorry, um, because I think my internet is uh, uh, playing tricks on me, uh, is, is a little bit slow. Is it possible that you can repeat the uh, question, please? Absolutely. Um, so Sarah said, since my diagnosis, I'm the biggest I've ever been. I'm five foot one and over 13 stone. I use a balanced diet and not gaining weight, but I'm not losing either. And I struggle with any exercise. Do you have any, any extra advice for Sarah? I guess that that will be a good time um, to um, uh, to track um, her nutritional intake, because sometimes you know there will be um, you know, a, a, you, that she would be able to discover some bits and pieces that um, you know hampering her, her her progress. And I guess that you know start looking at from that point onwards. Um, I, I do believe that that will be a good place to start. Um, you know if you know. If using apps is not a problem, then you know there are quite a few different um, you know applications that she can download on her phone or smart device that she can start tracking her progress. And I do, I, I do stand by uh, what I said before. I mean, if if she could, um, you know, start off with tracking her intake for you know for just for seven days, and then um, you know and see, uh, I think it might be. Um, you know, it might be really useful to sort of like open up any more extra dialogue in terms of in terms of the reason why you know she is not um, you know losing some of the weight. But again, um, what I also want to uh, mention is you know a lot of people tend to feel that oh I need to do exercise in order uh, uh, to lose weight. I think the key element to look at the exercise is you know using exercise to help um, you know with other sort of um, yeah, uh, you know. You know other things such as you know managing you know your long-term conditions uh, in particular with inflammatory arthritis we know that the risk factor for cardiovascular condition is really high so you know use the exercise side to help and I think weight loss is really going to be a byproduct. Absolutely I know we're constantly saying to people that exercise is the best thing you can do for axial spa so as you say if then you get the weight loss alongside that then that's a, a great benefit as well if, and, if you want and I, to do. and i feel that yeah, yeah and i feel that um it might be quite useful look at you know your last um the interview uh, looking at um uh, because you've got a gentleman uh, an osteopath which talked about um resistant training and weightlifting i think that would be quite a good sort of um, yeah, uh, uh, fresh and just looking at you know lifting weights um, is not you know it's not all bad but maybe you know people might say that that might be my <laughs> my bias uh, I guess that you know with people with axial spa exercise really is key absolutely yeah for everyone watching that was a session with Andrew McMillan a couple of weeks ago yeah, Andrew, and, that's it. yeah. yeah. And he, um, yeah, he, he did talk about kind of weightlifting and, and people wanting to use larger weights, but he also touched on using things like resistance bands and things like that, which are less strain on yes. the body while mm. getting that yeah. and strengthening things. So thank you for, for reminding everyone. I guess that some, I, yeah, I, I guess also because now the gymnasium uh, have been reopened, everyone's are like rushed down to, you know, <laughs> start working out. Um, you know, if you are hoping to, um, you know, use um, resistant training to help with your um, inflammatory arthritis. I would, I would urge you to start off with really, really gentle, and um, so nothing more than you know two sets, um, you know per body part, um, will be useful. And then aiming for slightly higher reps at this stage, uh, and then that will be, uh, you know, that would be a good place to start. And then the S you know, your body and your muscles and tendons and also your nervous system getting accustomed to it, then you can start slowly increasing the volume and also the intensity. But, you know, if you are starting out or because it's such a long period of the time during the lockdown 3.0 that no one uh, been able to um, resist and train, start off really light. And then if you have been, um, you know, training um, beforehand or a veteran, I still would urge you to you know, drop your uh, intensity down to about 15% of, uh, well, 
of your one one rep max. I mean, that will be um, you know, that will be useful. Well, that's really helpful and yeah, really important advice as well. Thank you. Um, I've seen Sophie has um, commented. Um, Sophie had the question before the session about um, how using diet to gain. Yes. I'm not sure if she um, commented before um, you answered her question, but she was saying um, she's dairy free. And do you have any tips on high calorie food that's still healthy? Because you touched on that a little bit. But any any other tips? Yes, um, I would then you know looking at um, you know using um, uh, well, I don't like to use this term <laughs> fat, <laughs> because you know all fats um, you know can be um, uh, you know your diet but you know then I will start looking at uh, using a little bit um, you know more um, you know dietary fat because you know uh, on a per gram basis um, your dietary fat has nine cal calories in comparison to um, you know protein and carbohydrate which a gram will give you um you know the four calories so i would start maybe you know using uh, be a little bit more generous <laughs> on uh, using the oil uh, oil uh, like olive oil or even uh, what i said uh, earlier you know rapeseed oil you know for cooking um but olive oil do make a fantastic salad dressing and as the weather, well, <laughs> it's getting a little bit warmer, um, you know, yeah, you, yeah, um, you're using an olive oil base as a salad dressing, and then, then you'll put it on a salad and then add it on, you know, um, uh, with like, you know, a bit of chickens uh, or even, um, you know, or even tofu um, in particular, you know, you, you do like sort of uh, red meat, you know, strips of, um, you know, steak, you know, that could be, um, you know, quite a nice meal um, that you can have. You know, especially when the um, weather is getting a little bit warmer. Hopefully, hopefully we're getting there. <laughs> yes. That's really helpful. Um, oh, yeah, and Sophie said thank you um, for the advice. Oh, thank you, Sophie. Uh, Hope you find that useful. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, so Mary's comment is saying, I think weight gain during lockdown is very common. What's helped me is eating 50% more veg and not buying any crisps, chocolate, biscuits, biscuits, cake or cheese. I, I was saying that as we were chatting before the session, I, said, yes. I just can't have it in the house, <laughs> otherwise they're gone. <laughs> yes, I absolutely concur with that. <laughs> um, oh, and she agrees, um, she said, as you advise, the, the food diary is really crucial as well. Um, and, and having a, a static exercise bike. So thanks for sharing your tips there, Mary, that's really helpful. Thank you, Mary. Um, and Abby's asked if um, after the session, could we share a link to the research on fat cells and the effect on biologics? I might be able to do a PubMed search myself. Yes, yes, yes. I, I have I have got that, um, uh, uh, I have got the store in my computer somewhere and I will email that over to you, sorry. Wonderful, thank you. I'll pop it in the video description, but Abby, I'll reply to your comments as well so you can see when it's on there. Um, and so uh, Jin asks about, um, he says, I have to follow a low fiber diet, avoiding vegetables. How would you adjust your plate? That's a, that's a tricky one. <laughs> right, okay. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it, I mean, it sounds as though that um, you know, uh, Jim may have some you know, gastro um, issues uh, in particular. Um, you know, I know that uh, a lot of people um, you know, with actual, uh, with actual spa do have um, you know, um, you know, Crohn's or UC. So I think the, one of the um, uh, one of the management for that um, could be using a uh, low fiber type diet. Uh, um, I vegetable side of things, um, you know, they are there to help to increase the satiety um, of the meal. Um, but I think, you know, it will be down to what Jim is looking to achieve. Um, if he's looking to, um, you know, um, weight reduction, then I guess that, you know, with the vegetable side of things, um, you know, you can keep it small, but also keeping the uh, carbohydrate and, uh, and the protein portion small as well. And then he will be able to achieve his goals. Oh, that's really helpful. Um, yeah, they've commented again saying that's right, they've got colitis. Um, and yeah, and it's to achieve weight loss. So, um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully that's helpful. I think, I guess that, you know, on the, you know, on the really overarching terms, um, even though that um, the human body is not an efficient engine, 
you know, uh, and I certainly see that there's a lot of, uh, um, you know, social media posts and articles um, saying that, you know, calorie in doesn't equal calorie out, you know, there's always going to be a magic insulin uh, fairy somewhere, you know, to put weight on people. But I, I guess, that, you know, all the research are pointing out that, you know, calorie in does, you know, have a, 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 yeah, a calorie in and calorie out does have a huge impact uh, on how we control, you know, our body weight. And, and so, you know, you can manipulate the variables, um, you know, even, you know, if you wanted to um, you know, look at, um, you know, weight gain, then, you know, increase the um, uh, calorie intake and reduce calorie um, you know, output, then yes, then you, you are likely going to achieve your goals and vice versa for uh, weight loss. Um, so, you know, overall, it's just how you manipulate the calories um, that I think is, is going to be really useful. But saying that, it doesn't mean that I would ask everyone to start counting calories because, you know, it will be one of these things go you know, off people's head, you know, but portion size is so crucial is because if you have a smaller meal immediately, you know that your um, calor calorific intake is going to be on a small side. Absolutely. And I think that's really important as well for, you know, for people who don't want to weigh themselves and don't, you know, and for them, it's not, good to be counting calories and things like that. So I think that's a really good way of looking at it. It's just a, a practical change that you can make and just judge it you know, day by day like that as well. It's really helpful. Um, and I've seen we've had a comment from Joanna. Um, Joanna comments, um, she says, I'm five foot two and 16 and a half stone. I have hypothyroidism and eat once a day around 10 p.m. I'm never hungry. I used to swim and do aquafit classes. I didn't lose weight, but my core muscle became, being stronger helped with movement. So I'm, yeah, linking into the, the exercise side there as well. Um, okay, so I think we have covered all the questions that have come in so far. Um, everyone watching, please do pop any more questions in the comments. I'll make sure that we answer them and I'll double check on my phone, make sure I've not missed anyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've had we've had lots of questions so it's hard to keep track of them <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, but, you know sorry, <laughs> sorry go ahead. I, I think it's, it's my internet <laughs> do you have any final I guess that, yeah I, I guess that um you know um, first of all thank you so much for having me um and then um, you know, you can you, you can definitely um, you know uh, uh, reach me by calling um, the arthritis well, by calling arthritis action or send me an email, Martin at arthritisaction.org.uk. Uh, sorry, if I could me also mention that arthritis action offers uh, subsidised clinical appointments for its members to see an associated practitioner in their areas, and uh, arthritis action uh, arthritis action. Associated practitioners can be a physiotherapist, an osteopath, or an acupuncturist. And, all. and on top of all that, members will get access to me without any extra cost. So a little bit of shameless plug there. I hope that is all right. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm delighted you shared that because the, yeah, the associated practitioner system and, and the support that you offer, I think, are really fantastic for members. So absolutely everyone please do head to the website check those out and and look at membership as well and thanks so much for for your time today it's been so helpful and based on the, the questions and comments coming in i can see lots of people have found it really helpful mary's commented um to say thank thanks you. so much it's really useful um thank so you. for everyone watching um just to let you know our next session is going to be next wednesday the 21st of april and it's at 1 p.m again and i'll be joined by lara wiseman Laura Wiseman is a pain management mindset mentor and coach, and she'll be talking about using relaxation techniques to help manage chronic pain. So it should be a really interesting session, some, some practical activities and also an information session as well. Um, yeah, we've had loads of thank yous coming in. So Martin, please do pop on the, on the post later to read all the, all the comments there as well. It's really nice. Um, so thanks again. Um, and for everyone thank watching, you everyone. friends and family as well, if you found it helpful. Wonderful. Thanks, Martin. So I'll stop the uh, the live stream there, but hopefully see everyone next week. And thank you, Zoe. I'm sure we'll get Martin back at some point as well if he lets us. <laughs>